Good morning, beloved fam and brethren. And as always, by the Heavenly Father's grace, mercies, and spirit, um, we're here and bringing forth only his word, which is the 1769 King James Version Bible. It's not a preference because it contains all the books that the Heavenly Father organized and made into his book, which he prophesied about in Malachi 3, verse 16, down to verse 18, Isaiah 34, 16, long before the Bible was an actual book. It was just the different writings of the different prophets and servants of the Most High. So by learning the Bible, we start to understand these facts rather than be led by people's facts or mix anything that man says with the Bible. Let God be true by his word and every man a liar. And that's written in Romans 3, verse 4. So now let's get into it because many people, unfortunately, as prophesied, many of our people would be against Christ, who's also the Bible. He's also the word of the Heavenly Father made flesh. So you have in the past and today, whether to Christ's face or to the face of his servants in the past and today, you have many that are against the word, including some that talk about him because they don't understand their blasphemy and their sins. They don't understand they're taking his name in vain and the Heavenly Father's name by following the Heavenly Father through religions, through different groups, through Israelite group religions, through um, Christianity. And you can see that although a Christian will call a Jehovah Witness a false prophet, they all collect tithes. You might have brothers in Israel that actually know we're Israelites, and that's correct, brothers, and make sure that you continue in the word of truth. Unfortunately, because of the precepts of men that replace the, the word of the Most High, or instead of going by his word only and mixing precepts of men, ultimately, they're also collecting tithes as money. They're also following the traditions of false prophets rather than the tradition and the word of the Most High, which is the true biblical Jesus Christ. That's who we're to follow. Christ even asked us plainly, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? So now for those that may not even be able to grasp this conversation because they dismiss and close their ears about anything related to the Bible, we're not necessarily reaching out to you. You're, you're going to be able to hold firm to whatever you believe in. And as the prophecies unfold according to the Bible and things continue to get worse and worse, you're probably going to be changing your mind sooner or later or at the point where the scriptures say, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. But you're being forewarned because a lot of people that want to come around in the last opportunity um. You know, those procrastinators and those people that want to do things their way stubbornly, they're not going to be able to come around and say, yeah, well, I believe now. So they that seek me early shall find me. That's a constant prophecy, constant theme throughout the Bible. Matthews 8, 17, you have many scriptures. Um, I said Matthews instead of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17 in many precepts, um, Isaiah 55, verse six. So this isn't a new thing, but in these last days, we have to seek the heavenly father early. So now um, one of the issues that people have with the Bible is they actually compare the Bible by not knowing the Bible. They compare it to fables. They compare it to fairy tales. They even before dealing with the Bible in any sort of intelligent or um, how you say, uh, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, scholarly way. They tend to deal with the Bible in a mocking, um, like the heavenly father says, um, scoffing way, like not only rejecting something, but in a grossly disrespectful way. So the same way that they behave to Christ, to his face, many of those that were supposed to be teachers of the word we see that same behavior in people, whether they're atheists or whether they have a Bible, once they're confronted with the word of truth. But we want to help those that have heard so many lies that they don't know what to believe. So one of the ways that we get and face these lies is by the Bible itself. So now let's go to Matthews chapter two, because many people, they're quick to respect 
and exalt man's wisdom, man's education, universities, you know, education system and higher learning. So we're going to prove the Bible's validity and the fact how people by being overcome by spirits, being overcome by their own pride and blindness, they accept everything that the Bible itself identifies as true while rejecting the Bible, which makes no sense. Let's let's get this. So um, this is, we're going to get right to the point. Let's get, so we're going to get Matthews 2 and verse 1. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, so Bethlehem of Judea, Judea is in southern Israel, the land that surrounded the part of Israel that was given to the tribe of Judah. It was southern Israel. So let's quickly go to Micah the fifth, because when we speak about the Messiah, people, again, are quick to attribute anything related to the Bible, anything related to the heavenly father, our creator, or his word, the true Messiah, the biblical Jesus Christ, they associate any of those true topics with lying religions, with what the Bible proves is idolatry, such as Christianity, such as Catholicism, such as Jehovah's Witnesses, such as Mormons, and even, unfortunately, you have our people in Israelite groups that also fall into that same category of doctrines of men. Religions are, are inventions of men. All their, all their history, all of their doctrine can be traced right back to an origin. The word of the Heavenly Father is all the way back in the beginning. Even before men were created, the Heavenly Father's word existed and continues to this day. And the Heavenly Father made a book out of his words so we could have understanding about this life that our creator placed us in. Unfortunately, you have many people that want to speak for the creator, want to follow the creator in ways that men have set up instead of what the Heavenly Father himself has established and set up. So that has all this confusion, lies, and basically everybody following what they feel. So religions are crowded by people because it was made of men and it's it coincides right with what people feel or what they can follow just enough to feel holy and is easy enough for them to continue in. They can get to the end of the requirements of any religion. They can be what any religion will call righteous if they just do a few things. The Heavenly Father requires us to serve him daily out of a, out of a true heart and to endure to the end, to not be arrogant and think because we're trying to serve him, we're actually serving him, that we're now saved or righteous. He that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So in a very simple and clear way, people would prefer to say, well, I go to church every Saturday or Sunday. I do X, Y, and Z. Therefore, I'm holy and no one can take that from me. Rather than they have to endure and increase and do better according to the way that the Heavenly Father set up according to the way that the righteous men and women that we read about in the Bible, our righteous foremothers and forefathers, we read about them and we see that they also, they had to endure to the end. They had to keep good works throughout their life. Not for a time period, not at a time in their life that they followed God and then they realized they had more to do. Nothing like the craziness that goes on today, the Bible establishes truth for us. So let's continue in this truth. So we just read Matthew's, the second chapter, about the of Jesus Christ being born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is not Atlantis. It's not some mythical place that people speculate about. Or was it in the Paleozoic era? No, that was 250 million years ago. No, it was 75 million years ago. So we're, th this isn't some carnal scientific debate and theory. Bethlehem is a place that exists today just like it existed over 2,000 years ago and 3,000 years ago, it existed, existed in ancient Israel, it was south of Jerusalem, and it existed during the time of Christ because he was born there. Not by opinion, hundreds of years before he was born, the Heavenly Father made sure that he prophesied every possible thing about the Messiah. So when he came and lived up to all those prophecies and fulfilled them, 
and accomplish them that he would prove he was the Messiah by works, not by people believing it, not by people saying it, not by people opening lavish cathedrals on the blood of the people they raped and murdered, but actually based on the word. So let's go to Micah 5 and 2. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, very small place as a suburb south of Jerusalem, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So we read about Jesus Christ, not by name, but the entity, the spiritual being that's alongside the heavenly father in the beginning. We read about him in Genesis chapter one, verse 26. That's why the Bible says, and God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Plural terms for the term God in that precept refers to the heavenly father and his chosen son that was there from everlasting with him, everlasting like him, the biblical Jesus Christ. Not Christianity's versions of Christ, not their false representations and idols of a man they set up to be Christ, but the actual biblical Jesus Christ, who's also the word, the Bible, that we're commanded to follow and that exists so we could have understanding, so that truth could be established and we could learn and verify and follow it. So now from here, let's go to um, Luke. Let's go to Luke, the second chapter, okay? Because we just read about Bethlehem. That's a place that exists even today, even though as prophecy prophesied and proves that in Luke 21, 24, Christ let us know that in these last times, there wouldn't be Israelites in the actual land of Israel in Jerusalem. There would be Gentiles, the people living there, walking and destroying the land, polluting the land, making a mockery of the Holy Land, they would be Gentiles. And those are the so-called white men that call themselves a Jew, and you have the so-called Arabs. So let's pause in the injustices between those two people fighting over a land that ultimately is not theirs. The actual Israelites are not in that land. So now, when we start to learn the scriptures, we start to make sense of what we see and hear instead of going by our emotions or people that are emotionally charged around us or people we may be have acquaintance or friends with at work. Oh, I, I'm cool with him and he's Israeli. So he like we're, we're not getting into that. We're going to deal properly and apply the scriptures with anyone that we deal with. Obviously, we're not foolish. We're not weak either. We're wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And we're focused on applying the scriptures and learning and what the scriptures established by the Lord's spirit. That's what we're going to bring out, not our own words. So now this is Luke, the second chapter. OK, this is a powerful one. So pay attention, because, again, many people knock the Bible and even some people that believe in the Torah have the nerve. And let's say it more accurately, have the lack of understanding which then brings about a, a false courage or a lacking of understanding boldness to say that the New Testament, which the Heavenly Father, who's, this is his book, he controls, he controls the men, he controls everything about his word. They say that a part that's attached to the Bible and part of the Bible is false, while ignoring and lacking understanding of the whole Bible. And then claim that the Heavenly Father that's perfect and all-powerful can't control men messing with his word or leaving it such that the heavenly father says that the world would never and his people would never be without his word they're saying no 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 that's not true there's no bible so you got to follow men or follow the spirit in you and all this other baloney minus scriptures so we're going to stay in the scriptures and we're going to go to here in luke chapter 2 verse 1 and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus. Caesar Augustus is the most famous and most influential of the Roman Caesars. He's one of the people most celebrated in history. He also goes by the name of Octavian. That's also how he's known at in history. And in Roman history, which is very popular today, 
with the Greco-Roman children ruling the earth, the children of Esau ruling the earth, we see that Caesar Augustus is identified in the Bible. So this Christ wasn't born in Atlantis. He wasn't born in some other planet. He wasn't born in some archipelago that no one knows about even today. This is in the ancient world ruled by the Romans. And while Augustus Caesar was ruling, um, Caesar ruled, I think, from 14 BC to 31 AD. He also ruled the longest of any Caesar. And he set up a triumvirate, which was three different rulers of the different territories. Caesar did a lot of things that many people could expand on what I just said. I'm not so much focused on Caesar. I do have understanding and studied Roman history, so I'm aware of Caesar. But the focus, we don't, we're not in this condition as a people and suffered slavery and are destroyed and looked at as uneducated, looked at as less than or minorities and every other um, derogatory label, not because we don't know about Roman history, it's because we don't understand how much history the Bible has. The Bible is the only absolute truth on this earth. And instead of trying to say it's not accurate or instead of trying to push your own words or, or be a parrot to men, start to learn to parrot what the Heavenly Father says. We're speaking about Caesar, but we're not going to books of men. We're not running to Wikipedia. We're staying in the Bible. Because many people, again, they say the Bible's false. It's a fairy tale. Why don't you just use that for wood? Why don't you just burn it? It's the same purpose. It would be better than you having it to destroy your mind. No, there are liars and children that follow Satan that don't follow the Bible. So that's why there's so many lies. No liar actually follows the Bible. No false prophet actually follows the Bible. So once we start to learn the Bible, false prophets, liars, they become easy to identify, starting with ourselves. We start to see all the things that we have to fix and change and why we were so easy to be deceived. And we have to continually grow. We can't just learn that and be looking to teach. We have to continually grow. Then when we're truly converted after a lot of time, that's when we're to teach based on the commandments, not opinion. So now let's read this again. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. So most of the known world was ruled by Caesar. They ruled, their kingdom stretched across about 12 time zones in most of the known world. So what happens, Caesar gave a decree at this same time that's important for those that actually seek truth. He gave a decree so that everyone would be taxed. Let's continue. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor in Syria. So the scriptures are giving very precise history, even of the other non-Israelite nations, the nations that were not the true Jews. Because the Heavenly Father doesn't isolate truth. He allows it to be brought forth to Israel first, but also even the nations that were scattered among and the nations themselves. So that no one would justify being ignorant. They could be ignorant or die. Ah, that's not for me. You can do that at, at, your, at the cost that you want to pay. Or you have the choice and then you deal with your choice. What we're reading, though, is actual history. You don't have to. No one is speculating in this world governed, governed by the Gentiles that teach the Bible in lies in religions. And say there is no God, but if there is a God or there is a Jesus, it's us. So they're able to do all these things, but we don't have to speculate. We speculate about Jesus in this lying world, but you don't speculate. You can go right and find the year that Caesar was doing this tax. And the scriptures let us know this is 1 AD because we're gonna, we're not gonna maybe read the whole thing, but this is where the history of the biblical Jesus Christ being born, that we read the prophecy in Micah 5 and 2. So let's continue. It says, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. So now this decree, even though they didn't have computers and cell phones, Caesar had enough obvious power and resources that people wanted to, they had to go pay their taxes. 
And as we're commanded in Romans 13, we're to pay our taxes because you have a lot of our people, if they're not living in crime, they're doing things that are not only sinful before the Heavenly Father, but sinful in him to Caesar, who he allowed to rule the old world and now rule this world in the last days. So we have to make sure that we are blameless in obeying the laws of men, especially when they don't conflict with the laws of the Heavenly Father. So brothers, you got to pay your taxes. You might be in some situations where you don't have to. You're retired or certain other things, but for the majority of brethren, obviously, don't twist these words. Make sure you pay your taxes. You're not sure, oh, all right, what do I fall under? Pay your taxes. That's how easy it is. Don't try to swindle uh, Caesar or his descendants that we're under today. That's a different topic. You pay your taxes. Well, they robbed us. They didn't. You pay your taxes. When we read in uh, Matthews chapter 17, verse 27 and 28, Christ told Peter to get some money and to pay for the taxes for him and Peter so that they don't give any offense. So we're not allowed to talk about the Heavenly Father and be lawless in the world. We have to follow man's commandments and laws, and we have to first and foremost follow the Heavenly Father's commandments and laws. If you're a true servant, if you're not, you're going to continue to do what you want and find out why that was a deadly and fatal error and why we shouldn't follow men, especially brothers that know that we're Israelites. So now let's continue. So it says, and Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea onto the city of David, which is also known as Jerusalem, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David. So as we see, Jerusalem is connected. It's in Southern Israel. David, the city of David is also known as Jerusalem. And the scripture is breaking it down here that South is where Bethlehem is found. So the point being is that again, Bethlehem where Christ was born, as they try to say Christ it's religion is for the misguided. Religion is for the weak. It's for the lost, for the blind. It's for, uh, you know, people that are superstitious and need something to believe in. Life is too hard for them, so they need some faith in something random. No. Faith means truth when you read in the Bible. So there's one faith, one Lord, one baptism. There's one truth. There's one right way. There's one true faith. So faith, there's no such thing as blind faith, and we're reading facts in the Bible, thousands of years ago, Christ was born in 1 AD. And to show you how powerful the Heavenly Father's word is, it doesn't just isolate some mythical people or some, some things defined as fables. No, the Bible deals in actual history. We're reading history, but because people have turned the Heavenly Father's word into lies and not people don't know about it, because they're following those lies or they're going. Um, you know, through the Heavenly Father, we're always going to overcome technical difficulties or any other thing. So, um, so when we continue to read, we see that Christ was born in, in Bethlehem as the scriptures prophesy. Okay. And that's the main thing. And he wasn't born December 25th. And, you know, when we continue to read the scriptures, we see that the scriptures show that when, when Israel came to Jerusalem, because all Israel didn't live in Jerusalem. So when they came to Jerusalem, um, and in particular ended up in Bethlehem, a little bit south of um, Jerusalem, because the prophecies, you know, can't be broken. What we found is not only was the Messiah born as Micah 5, 2, and many other scriptures prophesied he would be born, but specifically in Bethlehem, like Micah 5 and 2. But we also see right at that same time, even if people or heathen didn't care or they had other focuses in the past or today, the Messiah was born in 1 AD, which was right at the time the Bible also lets us know that Augustus Caesar was ruling. So we would have how to track records, not just depend on the so-called white man's records, because with his records, he's infallible in the past or today. 
but everything starts to get clouded when it's dealing with the heavenly father, his word, and the Bible. So that's how we know that the heavenly father controls his word. Because how is there any question when the so-called white man keeps such great records over the course of thousands of years, coins that we use? He has records of everything in museums, in his archives, in the Vatican, in the different libraries, the Library of Congress. He has all these records. So instead of us trying to fight to get these records and get in their libraries or sneak in there in a security um, uniform, you have the Bible. So really focus on the wisdom that we have rather than be debating and arguing with people. Focus on learning, especially young brothers, young sisters. Focus on applying the scriptures so you could get more understanding. Understanding comes from doing the commandments and applying the scriptures, which is the same thing. So now um, there's more, but we got the point. Where Christ was born and who was ruling at that time, who you have libraries full of information about Caesar, Octavian, Augustus Caesar. Um, let's go to Acts 28. OK, because you have the Apostle Paul, who people claim he's a liar. They claim all these things, yet people seem to neglect that historical figures um, that are mentioned. Um, so let's get right to the point. Um, Acts 28, verse 14, where we found brethren and were desired to tarry with them seven days. So we went toward Rome and from thence, when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as, um, sorry, um, this is where I want to be. I just want to read a little bit about, um, I'm sorry, I said Acts 28 is Acts 26. Okay. Um, so now, um, let's get right to the point. So uh, this is Acts 26, 27, excuse me. It says, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. So we understand that what... Right, so let's go over a couple more scriptures and then we'll pause. We're having te technical difficulties, so bear with us. So this is Acts 26, 27. Um, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. So there's more, but we'll get right to the point. So the Apostle Paul, a true servant of the biblical Jesus Christ, he wasn't a Christian and definitely not a follower of religion like Christianity is claiming to be a church of Christ or something like that. That's that's not biblical. What is biblical is that King Agrippa was a historical figure that you can find out about and read about. So the Bible is boldly referring to ancient historical figures for those that would try to refute the Bible or claim it's not real. When we're reading about real actual occurrences, we're not reading about Atlantis, we're not reading about fabled lands, we're not reading about Camelot. And, well, was it real? Was King Arthur real? I don't know. I think he was, but it's a legend. No, we're reading about actual historical figures. Let's now go to um, Luke 13. So Luke 13 and verse 1, okay? Um, so it says, There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. So it was big news that Israelites were murdered when they were trying to make sacrifices to the Heavenly Father in ancient time. You know, this is the time of Christ. So they were murdered by Pontius Pilate. So this murder of Pontius Pilate also ultimately murdered the biblical Jesus Christ. When we read in um, uh, Matthews 27 and we read in many other precepts. So what we're to learn from this is that Pontius Pilate, who was a governor under Caesar, as real as Augustus Caesar was in the Bible, so was Pontius Pilate. And there are historical facts about him that have nothing to do with the lies of Christianity or any religion. And the Bible has nothing to do with Christianity also or any religion, no matter how people try to mix and combine it with the lies of men to justify them not following or believing the Bible or believing the New Testament, which they err in doing. 
they do err and not know in the scriptures. So we're going to get, we, we're running out of time. So we're going to get first Maccabees. Okay, Maccabees, you need the 1611 or 1769 King James Version Bible. Okay, so first Maccabees, I'm going to get it real quick. All right, so now, um, so let's get um, Maccabees 101. And it happened that after Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece, and made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth, and went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations, insomuch that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. So we see in the scriptures that the Alexander the Greek, he was a true ruler. Verse seven, so Alexander reigned 12 years and then died. So there's more on this, but if Alexander the Greek is identified in the Bible, how then is the Bible false when other events around the time of Alexander happened that's described in the Bible? That's why we have to use the Bible. We can't depend on the facts of men or the history of men only. Okay, so we're going to have to pause here, but make sure you learn the Bible, learn what the Heavenly Father says and see the facts of even the heathen that lived in the earth in the past and today identified in the Bible. All right, so that you're not distracted with facts of men and lies. Stay with the truth of the word, the word of truth, the Bible, the gospel of the kingdom, which is the Bible. All honor, praises and glory to 